My friends, please stay tuned to the end of this clip to get a sneak peek at the aerial phenomena clip that I'm going to be posting. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> My friends, welcome back. It is August 1st. We actually made it 1.11 p.m. Good number there. And we're going to get right into this stuff. As you can see, we had a pretty significant strip of storms that took place over the center part of the country. We also have what sort of looks like a tropical system kind of brewing in the outer banks. That is the talk of the town, at least for the U.S. Besides the fire situation going on, that will be a separate video. We are going to talk about why August 1st is so significant for the hurricane season and why we're seeing that reassurance happening. And I'm going to show you exactly why we think that, of course, on August 1st, our charts begin to show us the formation of hurricanes after a pretty long break since the first official start to the hurricane season. And I swear, it's like clockwork. We can jump over here to Tropical Tidbits, and every single August, we get a layout that'll take us about two weeks into the future, and take a look at this now. We are already getting projections off the west coast of Africa of big, big storms coming from the west to the east. And we're just doing this as an example. This is a real chart. This is Tropical Tidbits showing a major hurricane to the west of Bermuda and Florida by August 17th. Of course, we are not going to put any sort of guarantee into this storm. We have no clue where it's going to go. This says August 17th. We are 17 days away from that. So chances are this storm will not be in this spot when this really takes place. But the point I'm trying to make is that on August 1st, it almost seems like these charts go through a change where we can look into the future and start seeing these storms around the same time that our peak charts are telling us they're going to show up. And it really is amazing how just a day, the August 1st date and the way the atmosphere atmospheric conditions change it really is a teeter-tot right here at any given point within a few days of this august 1st date we always start to see the forecasting of those big hurricanes and now we're going to start to see the real big chunk and bulk of this season that everybody's been expecting now again as we go to a wider view here to see the entire atlantic i want to stress again that i am not forecasting a major hurricane right now i'm forecasting the month of august showing major hurricanes so so let me just put that disclaimer out there for those that want to bite my head off for going past a five-day forecast we're going to look at what the month of august may offer us and take a look at what popped up on the gfs today we just saw it a little bit closer but it kind of lines up with the back end of a sandstorm coming off the west coast as soon as that end pulled off the west side we see a low pressure system forming around august 3rd three to four days from now and as we move into the days following that that low pressure system passes the cape verde islands and then by the end of that first week we have our official low pressure system again this may take place a little sooner it could take place after it may be a whole separate system altogether the point being is that the atmospheric conditions are now favorable for the formation of these hurricanes that come off the west coast and by looking at this chart we can see that we're right on time for this june july and then august is when you finally see that line appear for the hurricanes and storms that come off the west coast to africa and then that continues to be our hot spot until almost october so it's really important to understand why this august first date is always so big with the hurricane season it really really is that drastic and almost seems that a switch is turned on or off and all of a sudden hurricane season re-emerges again. We had a quick start to it. We had one of our rare storms in early season storm come off that west coast of Africa. But for the most part, we saw our storms or the bulk of them form right here off the eastern coast of the United States after already having land interactions. So now we're going to get into a bit of what the real hurricane season has to offer us. And we're going to go through this slow, steady climb until September where we could see literally a storm a week. If you guys remember back in 2017, we had a hurricane every week for 10 straight weeks, which broke a record. And really quickly, I just want to separate these two images. We have August here, and I just want to be able to show this to you a little bit bigger and then compare it to July. So basically July, at least according to our averages, most of our storms will form, if any, in this likely region just past the Leeward and Lesser Antilles Islands and then makes a swoop towards the Gulf or up the East Coast, basically following the same path as if it would have had the storm formed back here. But the difference is, is when the storms are forming back here, as we see closer to August, that's also when we see these storms having a longer path to grow, more warm water and more momentum before they even get to the Leeward and Lesser Antilles Islands. That's where we start seeing storms like Irma and Maria. Remember, those were both part of the same storm season, the 2017 hurricane season. And earlier that year, letter H was a major Gulf storm, Hurricane Harvey. So if you take a step back and look at how hard it is to actually predict a hurricane season, it's very true. It's nearly impossible to really understand or know what's going to happen from season to season. But with all the data and history we have, 
we can see some things coming and we can have some expectations for how things are going to change at a certain date. And again, I'm talking about that August 1st date where we actually climb our first peak of the big mountain. We can see right here, this is our big peak season to the second week of September. And basically the same thing heading down until we get to that opposite side of August, which is going to take us well into October. I'm just letting you guys know right now with all that's been going on in this world, do not be surprised if we start seeing a hurricane a week. And I'm aware that's quite a bold statement. I'm not making the 100% prediction. I'm just saying that's how these things happen. That's how that season happened in 2017. And it seems to be how things are lining up right now. But you know we'll be here every step of the way to cover it and bring you every single bit of little information that you need. Of course, I'm going to keep an eye on this low pressure system as I'm sure a lot of other channels will. Just seeing this here really puts things in perspective for this month and what we really could expect in the very, very near future. We are going to be back to our normal scheduled morning videos starting tomorrow. I just wanted to get this update out to you guys as soon as possible. I've been working on some other interesting stuff that we're going to be incorporating into this channel and to the Into Thin Air News channel, which you can find and follow down in the information box. It's basically a backup channel to this one, but you'll see some of the awesome stuff we're going to be posting on there. And I'll give you a little sneak peek of that as soon as possible. Thank you guys all so much. I hope you're all well. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Shout out to Canada. Now watch close as the object pulls up to the moon, stops and takes a look, and then takes right off. I'll have a detailed breakdown of this clip very soon.